all of you to Friday at 5 once again. International Council for School Leadership is a knowledge sharing platform. Our vision is to empower, inspire, and also more importantly, enable educators and school leaders. Uh, we have uh, more than 500 members and we take several initiatives to achieve our vision. Friday at 5 is one of our initiatives, uh, which now is doing its 22nd episode. Uh, we did a data analysis of the last three weeks of Friday at 5, and we found that uh, there were participants from 10 countries, including US and Nigeria. We had participants from 24 states of India. There are remote villages in Kerala from where schools are joining us. So first of all, I want to thank all my audience for uh, religiously joining Friday at 5. You are the real change leaders of tomorrow. And I also um, attribute this success to the wonderful discussions that we have been having with our panelists over and over again. So I thank my panelists also for joining us and helping us create another wonderful episode of Friday at 5. When we think about mathematics, there are three aspects that um, are important. One is obviously the content knowledge of mathematics, where we talk about different Topics, we talk about trigonometry, we talk about calculus, we talk about shapes, numbers. Uh, the second aspect is the pedagogy of mathematics. Knowing trigonometry and being able to teach trigonometry are two different things. Unfortunately, we are not going to be touching upon both these aspects today. What we are going to be talking about is really mathematical thinking, which is the third aspect, which involves the skills that mathematicians use when they do mathematics. There is a chef. So one thing is the recipe. There are some ingredients. This is the content that makes that makes cooking possible in our kitchen. And then you need a recipe. The recipe is the pedagogy. And the third important thing is what's going on in the mind of the chef. So how is he thinking about cooking? So you have to think like a chef. So when we do mathematics, there is something happening in our mind. The way we look at mathematics, the way we think about mathematics, the way we go about doing mathematics, that requires some skills. So we are going to be talking about those skills. Um, so let me just go on to Deepa first. Deepa, when mathematical thinking comes to your mind, what are the skills that you immediately pick up out of the blue? Mathematics uh, defined by many mathematicians is science of patterns. So pattern recognition, identifying patterns. And so this skill of pattern recognition, working with patterns, creating patterns and understanding them uh, is uh, a lot to do with the mathematical thinking process itself. The other mathematical thinking that is extremely important and it applies itself also to the other um, mathematical thinking uh, uh, that comes to my mind immediately is the ability that mathematics builds for uh, us to work in the abstract space. So abstraction, when uh, a child is asked to solve a linear equation, for instance, a real world problem, and they are expected to set up a linear equation and solve it and solve for x, that when they move to that linear equation, it is abstraction. So mathematics is uh, actually building that ability in the child to work in, in, in abstraction, in abstract spaces. And that is a very, very important mathematical skill which applies itself to uh, computer programming, because again, a computer program is an abstract, again, tool, just like a linear equation is the abstract tool for solving the real world problem. Uh, the computer program is an abstract, again, albeit a very high level, high designed uh, you know, tool, but it is a computer program is again in the abstract space using an abstract computer language. So abstract thinking, that is again, uh, a very important mathematical thinking ability that gets built by mathematics, but applied outside of mathematics a lot. Uh, another uh, mathematical thinking um, ability that I would definitely talk about is uh, algorithmic thinking. So um, an algorithm is where we are giving step-by-step -step instructions. So we, in mathematics, we teach students to maybe solve a quadratic equation 
do step A, B, C, D, and then you get X equals whatever. Uh, so that step-by-step -step is an algorithm, but that algorithmic thinking that is getting built, again, applies itself to many realms. And I will even go back to your own analogy of cooking. A recipe is exactly an algorithm, which is the pedagogy, as you rightly said, of that particular chef. So he is using an algorithm to tell us, you know, how we can cook something exactly the way he would have, he or she would have done it. Of course, inductive, deductive reasoning, uh, making estimations. When a, child, when a child is playing in a football team or in a basketball team, they are trying to do a spatial estimation of who they should pass the ball to, how far are they from the goal, how should they, you know, angle the ball so that it it reaches their partner, not the opponent. So they're doing a lot of estimation in real time, very fast decision making is happening on the sports field. How different is estimation from guessing? Between? Estimating is when you know at least something that is close by, right? You're, so you're looking at uh, structures that are close to what you have to calculate. So like we do in very uh, elementary, I, I guess, middle school or uh, uh, primary, higher primary school, they have to multiply 102 by, uh, by 51. So they, they find the, the closest numbers to what they have to uh, you know, deal with, which is easier for them to calculate in their mind very quickly. So they are not doing a complete guess. It's not a wild guess. They, they know that they are within a, within a certain, uh, you know, boundary, they are finding uh, uh, numbers or uh, structures that is easier for them to manipulate in their mind. And they do that. And therefore, it is not a complete guesswork. Complete guesswork, I would say, is when you don't have any notion of where in this whole universe you are actually, you know, living, but you just you just close your eyes and say a b c d are the options okay now i'll do c next time i'll do d and next time i'll do a and, and yes they're probabilistically some of them will turn out to be correct so that is a complete guesswork but in estimation you know you you are able to find a boundary uh and a close enough boundary within which you can compute and that's, or work and that's, more and that's easily why, that's why i think uh, most of the estimates are linked with error of estimation so right. there's always the concept right. of error of estimation and you right. need to narrow it down as much as possible to right. become a good estimator and right. not a good guesser. Okay, right. So, right. so you have raised some really uh, awesome list of uh, mathematical thinking skills for my viewers. I'll just run you down. Uh, so patterning, recognizing patterns and working with patterns is a mathematical skill. Abstraction, obviously computer algorithms, artificial intelligence. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, work uh, people love to code, Archkal, you know, you are promoting six-year-olds to start coding. Uh, they would need that uh, skill. Algorithm, as you rightly said, in the kitchen also we use it, so we can use it almost everywhere. Inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning are two sorts of reasonings. Estimation is also something that you pointed out is also used in sports. Uh, and, and these skills are used in sports, music, kitchen, etc. Jonaki, two things. First of all, anything that you may want to add to the list of skills that we are talking about. Two things that come to my mind are algebraic thinking and proportional thinking. And then uh, why is it really important for teachers to, to develop mathematical thinking? And is it the job of only math teachers or uh, other teachers should also do that? Uh, yeah, so uh, there are many uh, skills which we have already talked about, but maybe I would add to that list uh, visualization as a process, generalization, uh, moving from the general to the particular, you know? So not just generalizing patterns, but looking at the particular and the specific. Um, also, you know, looking for invariances, looking for what varies, because, you know, uh, especially when you are looking at geometry or many other aspects of mathematics, it is very important to see what remains invariant, uh, what, is invariant and what varies. So this contrast helps you to make conjectures. Explain I, that. Explain that little bit more because a lot of our audience may not be math teachers. So just explain. Yes, okay. Yeah. You know, what do so we What do we mean here? Yes. So what we mean is, for example, uh, suppose you are asked the uh, asking grade six children to visualize the angle sum property of a triangle. 
that the sum of the three angles, at least drawn on a plane, the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees. So uh, typically, you know, you may just give them some triangles and they measure the angles. And we say that, look, this is going to be 180 degrees. But, you know, in a dynamic environment where you can actually manipulate that triangle. So, for example, there are softwares which allows you to drag the vertices and change the triangle. And the children can see that while the angles are changing, the side lengths are changing. One thing which remains invariant or constant is this angle sum. It remains 180, whereas angles are changing and sides are changing. So immediately it will become, a, they will see it as a conjecture. They'll make that conjecture, okay. So the, I think what is important, the skill set that is important for teachers is not to give away answers. So one, but, so one, one, one I'll interrupt you for a minute for the audience who might not know the angle sum property. So think of you are going to buy a shirt uh, so the, the, what can happen is that the, the length of the collar might increase or decrease. The length of the shirt might increase or decrease. But the fact that it will still have two arms and one neck is going to be invariant. So okay. in, in everything that you will find around yourself in real life, there are certain things that do not change mm -hmm. and certain things that keep changing. So your ability to identify things that do not change and things that change within a particular system, uh, any system for that matter, whether it's sports or whether it's art or music, etc. Sargam saath ki saath hi rehegi, usko kaise bajayenge, wo change hota jayega, but sur jo hai, wo utne hi rehenge. So there is a concept of, you know, things that are, that vary uh, in a system and things that don't vary. Am I correct, Jonaki? Yes. And this contrasting experience is what helps us abstract those uh, certain, we ha it helps us to see certain things. And then, you know, so the task should be designed in such a way that the children, uh, you know, basically pictures about whatever, suppose it's a geometry exercise, or it could be exercise, even when you are seeing a pattern, what does it, what does seeing pattern mean? It means that they're seeing a certain property, a commonality. A commonality is being observed. So if it's a sequence of numbers, let us say. Okay, so, um, I, and if that sequence of numbers emerges from a physical activity or some, uh, you know, some growth pattern. Uh, so then it will be easier for children to relate it. So, you know, it's a good idea, like you mentioned algebraic thinking. So it's a good idea to not just introduce children to sequence of numbers, but give them a picture which leads to that number sequence. Okay, so for example, if it's a, the, even the school textbooks have a lot of these uh, so-called matchstick problems where the children have to count the number of matchsticks at every stage. And then, so why is that given? Because, uh, you know, a physical picture gives more meaning and, you know, probably gives, uh, it just, I mean, it should not be just a number sequence and where they say you see what pattern it is. They are given a context for that number sequence. So uh, I would say some of the skill set that you know teach, uh, we need to build in students are visualization, approximation, estimation. You've already mentioned and discussed, uh, looking for invariances and the ability to make conjectures. And the skill set that teachers need to develop is not give away answers, uh, create scaffold thinking, to scaffold the children's thinking and push them towards design activities. So I would use this for this push and push and pull thing. Design a task which pulls in the student into the learning activity, where the student starts taking onus of the learning instead of pushing the content on them. So you know, usually it's always we are trying to tell students what to do. Even you know, uh, great thinkers like David Wheeler had said that, and Hans Rodenthal. Now, uh, if you have read the position, people who have read the position paper on the teaching of mathematics of the national curriculum framework, it very clearly articulates that there's only one goal of mathematics education and that is mathematization of the child's thought processes. But this big word mathematization is what it's actually mathematical thinking. And you know, Hans Rosenthal gives a very beautiful, uh, say he says, say, look, we have to uh, not just develop children's mathematical thinking, we have to develop our own teachers, our own ways of thinking, right, right. we have to keep evolving it so that you know we create those uh, learning opportunities for children and you become we are co-learners in the journey 
and then you see that the learning i really believe in this because i try very hard to practice this myself and these are you bring you in now the question is according to you what is your observation uh, why are we so overwhelmed by completing the syllabus getting the marks and not looking at the core of what really matters the question which you have asked uh, is really a um, very very relevant question in today's context uh, because this world mathematical thinking it has created buzz after the introduction of this uh, new education policy and in this new education policy the context set for the math mathematical thinking is that we shall teach children how to think uh, if we talk about the goal of uh, education then it is always to create a learner uh, to to convert him into a independent thinker and a good decision maker he should be able to deal his life successfully so if we understand this particular goal of educa education only then we will be able to uh, translate the this objective of teaching mathematics in terms of uh, the uh, actual uh, action and the function required while uh, uh, while dealing with this particular subject so uh, if i uh, just talk about the thinking i feel that um, thinking has two connotations in our mind one is that we work at the conscious level and another is we uh, work at the unconscious level so at unconscious level it is generally the thought process but uh, we need to be very um, uh, conscious about what is happening at the conscious level because uh, the activity which is happening and how that activity is happening that is important and that has to be uh, shaped up by the teachers uh, in a meaningful um, Uh, in a meaningful task so uh, uh, what i feel is that when the teachers they are uh, talking about uh, mathematical thinking or when they are uh, uh, assigning any particular mathematical uh, task to their learners the objective should not be to see the uh, quantitative outcome of the task the objective should be that how the child is able to uh, gain the meaningful relationships between the different variables or uh, how he is able to uh, communicate his thought process how the child is able to make uh, uh, how the child is able to understand the other's thought process so are we able to give these kind of uh, opportunities to the children since this is not happening in the classrooms and uh, the uh, this has become a general trend that we uh, measure the success only by the uh, by the marks so by the outcome which could be measured through uh, through the numbers so that has to be changed and what i feel now is that this goal can be can be attained only when the teachers own mathematical thinking process Uh, pitches in so unless until the teachers they start thinking in this direction we will not be able to attain this uh, goal so uh, uh, what i feel is that whenever we are talking about mathematical thinking we shall uh, talk in uh, uh, in three uh, perspectives one is that are we able to create right kind of attitude Uh, attitude towards how to uh, how to tackle any problem how to translate any problem uh, and how to uh, uh, have curiosity about a particular situation how to raise right kind of questions for that so uh, this kind of attitude attitude towards the subject and towards the thinking sh shall be created and another is about of course the mathematical skills because uh, lots of mathematical skills have been talked about zonaki has uh, talked about the triangle problem and i was just thinking that when we uh, it it has suddenly come to my mind that when we talk about the this uh, particular statement that some of the three angles of the triangle is 180 degree Uh, we uh, uh, tackle this problem in a different way in the class sometimes we do give them different triangles ask them to measure different angles and the inductive reasoning is uh, being inculcated but sometimes this also happen that teacher simply tells the child to cut three angles and put it on a straight line yes now now for the student it has become say puzzle that why the teacher is asking to put all the angles on a straight line what is the purpose 
so he takes time to understand mm. and that time shall be given to him because the, here also a special kind of skill is being introduced after the generalization he is also uh, uh, he is also learning to understand a, a special property of the uh, triangle or the lines or the angles mm. so uh, uh, we need to expose the children to the different situations for the same problems and also if the child is tackling a problem in different perspective then we shall give them opportunity to speak about their own thought process so if they uh, if they can speak uh, if they can share that how they have uh, reached to a particular solution and what steps they have followed this is going to uh, bring a, i think great change in the classrooms and their attitude towards the subject most important thing anita ji that you said was that unless our teachers start thinking mathematically um, they start thinking like that will be difficult for them so i want to give you this good news that uh, that icsl is planning to launch a one week online course on mathematical thinking only for teachers and that will be open it will be a online Great. program so we will be launching that most probably in february and and the idea is to help teachers of all subjects not just mathematics the purpose that we want to you know uh, have this webinar was primarily to explain to the education community and the educators that please do not think of mathematical thinking as only being restricted to mathematics it's used everywhere and in, in fact people who study law people who become judges uh, they use deductive reasoning they, they look at facts and from those facts they deduce something so a judge actually uh, is a prime example of somebody using deductive reasoning now where does mathematics fit in well mathematics happens to be one of the tools to develop these skills so please do not think that deductive reasoning is a gift of mathematics to people okay uh, mathematics is only a tool to develop deductive reasoning the deductive reasoning part and the power to to be abstract uh this is not the uh, the ownership of mathematicians that people who don't do study maths uh, they can't think abstractly that is not true a painter can a photographer can a musician can they can all think in abstract world but mathematics happens to be the tool in school curriculum to develop these skills uh so coming to mrs kelkar we have this question from a lot of people a lot of our audience wants to know where does mathematical thinking fit into lower grades maybe uh primary classes grade 1 or maybe even lower when the, when does it start according to you it starts in pre primary i mean one has to start in pre primary because we are not talking about mathematics but we are talking about mathematical thinking and what deepa was talking about the patterns in pre school we do ask the children to do lot of patterning there uh, seriation and patterning and maybe beading and then we say three white beads and then one red and again three white beads and one red that is what is mathematical thinking also asking the children to make a say pile of uh, some uh, blocks or something is mathematical thinking whether they are able to have a broader base and on that the uh, smaller blocks there that is the way or maybe things which sink and which float is also mathematical thinking slowly when you go to standard 1 and 2 uh, there you can talk about the estimation what we were talking about it is not the gaze it is the calculated gaze what uh, estimation is going to be so somebody had just i was uh, looking at the chats also somebody said that one has to know how much is 1 meter to know estimate whether this line is 1 meter or lesser than 1 meter yes of course that you will have to show but once you show how long is 1 meter then asking the children to sort out the things which are going to be nearly 1 meter or less than 1 meter or more than 1 meter is going to start in class 1 also we can do that or we can talk about tying the knots on a rope at a distance of maybe 1 foot or 6 inches that is also mathematical thinking there also when we were talking about what uh, anita was talking about letting the children think we don't do that in the classrooms normally it is completion of the syllabus how many marks is the child getting uh, also mathematical thinking uh, say suppose when you say two trains going at a certain speed one goes 10 kilometers more than the first one 
uh, one may be thinking that one train goes at x kilometer so another one goes at x plus train but i may be thinking one goes at x kilometer and another one goes at x minus train what is wrong in that we have to al allow children to think that that kind of lateral thinking has to be allowed to the children when you talk about the rhyming words that is also mathematics we call it ab ab but let us call it 1 2 1 2 or 1 2 3 1 2 3 again or 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 again a and c and b and d so that is also mathematical thinking so that can be done in any area see ask the children to make the seating arrangement for a concert there in the on the open air and ask the children that you want the teachers to be when you talk about certain variables and certain non variables so you give the children the variables that teachers will have to be near the primary students because otherwise they would make noise so therefore that is the constant that it cannot be changed ask the children to make the seating arrangement in a particular area with so many students that they will think mathematically ask the children whether 2 kilo of uh, uh, watermelon is better to buy or 1 kilo two watermelons are better to buy the ring that they would be wasting is going to be more in one uh, one kg of two of watermelons so that is mathematical thinking i think what you made very good point is that you know we are coming to the point of how do you develop mathematical thinking how do you teach mathematical thinking so my question to menika ji if you could share your views on how important is to get students to actually do mathematics not when i say do mathematics i want to be clear it's giving them a, a genuine uh, you know activity or a challenging problem that stimulates thinking so what are your views on that or uh, how would you go about developing thinking in students maybe slightly higher level middle school or senior school you know i'll just give you a very small example the teacher starts taking a class this is the selling price this is the cost price this is the profit this is the loss that's it how do you get it profit is sp minus cp what is sp what is cp is absolutely new unknown terms to the children give them a role play put up a mathematics fair you know that business model business ideas can be instilled mathematical logic thinking i am buying it for 2 rupees i am selling it for 2.5 3 rupees such very simple basic ideas organizing mathematics fairs melas so many things can be done i mean role play is one of the very important methodologies ways of putting up across the real life situation you know basically children teachers everyone disconnects math from the real life the conceptual teaching is missing we teach them how to solve a question but we have forgotten the concept the logic the methodology the processes that go behind that you know you take a very one small very example we teach the children divisible T by zero is undefined. I'm taking a very basic example, right? Why is it so? We have basically forgotten the why behind the problem. Mathematics is related to problem solving. I think all of us would agree on that. So when it comes to problem solving, we need to develop those kind of logical thinking, the methodology, the steps that go into solving a particular problem. Junaki, go ahead. I know you have something to say. Yes, <laughs> uh, regarding mathematical thinking and how to develop it, I would uh, like to. Rec I mean, I strongly recommend uh, that we create a space for mathematical explorations, and uh, within the curriculum. I mean, uh, we know that there are constraints of time as far as examination preparation and all of that, and that looms large on on children and teachers. but we must create a space for mathematical exploration simple things like even for very young children like counting problems you know simple give them uh, certain figures like a figure which is a triangle divided into very small triangles and see and count how many triangles of all possible dimensions are there or on a chess board you know how many squares of all possible size dimensions are there simple counting problems you know problems which don't require the knowledge of technical formulae too many but Uh, or simple games like you know i think of a number and you have to guess the number what is the minimum number of questions that you can ask me through which i can and uh, through which you can guess the number you know things like that but so or or simple tic tac toe how do you win what are the winning strategies of this game 
so games and games and puzzles by games and puzzles i i don't i mean spatial puzzles which you can manipulate by hand like tangrams and you know lot of puzzles available in the market for young children but also puzzles which where you know you can actually work out uh, you can solve why even a sudoku for example when you are solving a, four, a simple as child can be given a 4 by 4 sudoku to fill but also an older child can be asked what are the all possible solutions that can be there in the sudoku using the numbers 1 2 3 4 and that's a counting problem so simple problems should there should be space for such explore and more explorations like for example there's a topic which is not there in our curriculum so fractal geometry uh, is different from euclidean geometry but simple fractal constructions can lead to recursive thinking which is also a part of mathematical as well as computational thinking you know so uh, computational mathematical thinking are distinct and yet they are supportive and it is important to create tasks which are which integrate both and right. that would help uh, you know in other subjects as well Not right you know, one of the good books that uh, you know you can pick up anybody who is interested in understanding uh, john mason uh, has written a very good book uh, on thinking mathematically i personally attended uh, one of the sessions by john mason and i found that book to be really remarkable so please look at that book also let me take some questions generally a difference in verification and proving is not made very clear how can this be done uh well that's a good question uh, verification uh, is a different uh, skill set i don't know menga you want to take it see verification deals with the establishing that it is correct for a particular value or the result is true for a random value whereas the proof is a mathemat is a is a well established fact so i i would just wanted to add that when we are uh, proving again the mathematical thinking ability of deductive reasoning is what uh, is is getting inculcated again in the child because we are starting with something that is true and then we uh, are the given We're establishing given. the fact yeah yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, so, so verification verification is trying to testify whether it is correct or not absolutely so one other question is how is logical thinking different from mathematical thinking anita go ahead when you talk about the logical uh, thinking that means you are thinking in a very very organized manner mathematical thinking has larger domain Uh, this can be said logical thinking is a part of that logic also at the do- uh, in the realm of logic comes uh, you know the different types of proof that we teach our students like proof by contradiction uh, you know the contrapositive and all those things you know so uh, though that is there is a small chunk of that in uh, in grade 11 in as mathematical reasoning it is you know kind of isolated and it is not really dealt with very seriously but logic understanding and teaching logic must go hand in hand with mathematics and they are intimately related so that is uh, something where we must uh, build in logic more uh, thoughtfully in the mathematics curriculum so logic is a branch of mathematics uh, and it has certain syntax but mathematical thinking is mathematical thinking it stays like that um, mary samuel has a very tough question oh. for all of us Why, while teaching languages how do we facilitate students to think mathematically all right deepa seems to be the bravest all right deepa. i'm just going to start it and then i'm going to ask all my fellow panelists to add on to it only one thought that immediately came to my mind is when we're talking about pattern recognition and of course it was also brought up before that in languages if you if you are uh, talking about poetry poetry is nothing but a rhythmic pattern so if uh, creating uh, encouraging students to um you know create snippets of poetry because there they are going to be working with patterns creating patterns so they're going to be creating patterns so in that sense they are working with the language but they're also uh working with uh, patterns and uh, uh, creating patterns another area that uh, comes to my mind is abstract thinking and in language uh, one um, it lends itself to language uh where we can ask students to when they are creating stories right you give a just a broad um uh, you know outline of what you think the story should be but the students come up with a story of their own that is completely creative imaginative abstract thinking because they don't have any concrete substance in front of them they're creating it from an in an abstract space so 
I feel that writing a story uh, or creating a nice story with with a nice storyline, you know, beginning and the characters are, you know, maybe, maybe uh, a story in science fiction, you know, that is totally out of their imagination it's coming uh -huh. yeah, yeah i, could I add think that, that would add, add to abstract thinking yes please go ahead i i also want to add here when you talk about the phrasal verbs like give in give out give for so these are various permutations and combinations which create language because give in is different to give up it is give out is different to give in so this way you are going to create language so creation of language happens because of the permutations and combinations of the phrasal verbs. Right. That's the way I would decipher. Yeah, the only thing I can think of uh, to, to facilitate this answer is that I think whenever somebody is teaching language, writing is a part of it. Uh, yes. You have to write. And when you have to write, there is something called handwriting. If you want to analyze the difference between good and bad handwriting, and if you ask students to take a sample of handwriting of all the students in the class and form a committee and they have to select the person with the best handwriting and then explain why they chose that person you will see a lot of mathematical thinking happening when you're writing all the slant of each letter when you're writing has to be the same that should not vary because agar aisa hoga, the handwriting will not look good. The second important thing is that the approximate shape of each letter uh, is almost the same. You can't have very small P and very large R or very large S. So you have to make sure that, that there is some sizing that is happening. And all your S's, all your P's must be congruent. Not similar. They must be congruent for a good handwriting to take this. So there is a concept of symmetry, there is concept of uh, angles, there is concept of uh, congruence, there is congruence uh, concept of similarity, uh, there is pattern uh, while you are making, uh, does your P and Q's, um, what's your P's and Q's, um, do they look the same? So there is a lot of ways that even language teachers uh, can explain writing so that answers the question. I, I think we shall uh, inculcate a good habit of reading the newspaper or article. And we, we shall ask the students to frame at least one question out of that. Mm. The question can be sometimes very mathematical in nature. This may not be mathematical in nature, but it is going to uh, enhance their thinking skills. And they will learn a technique of asking good questions. So I think that also is going to enhance their mathematical thinking skills. Absolutely. There's no... When we were in school, we were asked to summarize or we were asked to write in yes. 200 words or 300 words. And then um, I told my mother that if I keep on counting the words, then it will take a long time. And she said, you count the number of words in a line and you count the number of lines and you multiply the number of words by the number of lines and you would know approximately... When we talk about approximation, estimation, then yes. she said approximately the words are going to be 200. And no teacher is going to reduce your marks by one or two words there, don't worry. And then when we were asked to summarize to one third, because summary used to be uh, asked for one third. So uh, to do that one third, once again, we used to do the same thing. That is also mathematical thinking there. So people, again, uh, all, the, all the teachers for all the subjects, please, uh, you have to, uh, you have to think you know, mathematical thinking is not just about mathematics, okay? It's basically thinking that can be developed using mathematics. But uh, nobody has ever said that it can only be developed by doing mathematics. So that is where logical reasoning comes into play. So yes, mathematics can help you develop pattern recognition the mason understands patterns okay very well yes. he can tell you how many bricks will go in which pattern so please try to understand the context of where the national education policy is coming from uh, mathematical thinking is not the responsibility of the math teacher alone um, it is not it does not have to be developed only through math books and math lectures. This is Tarun Chavi, sir. So in US, there is this something called Project 2061, where they benchmark the skills, attitude, and different aspects of science and mathematics, right? 
So I am very curious to know that because today we are talking about uh, uh, mathematical thinking, and if you don't know at what level what to be addressed, then how can we go ahead? So is there any attempt made by the Indian authorities or communities in benchmarking mathematical thinking for different different grade ranges? One answer I want to give you is that according to me, if you ask my personal opinion as a mathematician. that it it's almost impossible to create levels of thinking in a human being because that's the power of the mind when you talk about abstraction it's very difficult to relate abstraction to age when you talk about reasoning it's very difficult to create strata of reasoning and link it to age uh, that is not possible we can do it for skills but we cannot do it for thinking it doesn't matter what your age is your thinking is a different thing altogether actually so you you said pretty much what i was saying because why i was thinking and i'm I, as like you i'm not completely aware whether there is a rubric to measure the different levels of maturity of a thinking mathematical thinking process so uh, so that's what i wanted to share and which is what you we can have a framework which will put down all the different types of mathematical thinking mm. that needs to be inculcated what needs to be done at different age levels to inculcate that mathematical thinking but to measure it in terms of a rubric i felt it was a little difficult so if it does exist i would be happy to to see it yeah we will be also learning but that's how we do it uh, i want to thank all the audience and in the end i want to tell you two two small announcements those of you who are interested in in uh, your own professional development um, uh, icsl does offer a three week program it's called reset uh, we cover pedagogy we cover assessment and we cover use of technology over a period of three weeks the next batch is going to start on the third that's the third batch it's going to start on 1st of uh, february so you can visit our website www.icsl.org.in um to to take a look at that program if you like it you can register for it uh it's not free so before you want to take ask me that question no, let me just clarify it's not free but it's a great program i recommend every teacher to do it uh second i want to thank our sponsors s chan group for helping icsl uh reach these wonderful milestones uh because without their support it would have been very very difficult for us to achieve what we have been doing last of all um i want to thank uh, not last of all well there are two thank you notes that have to be given first i want to thank all the people who came and signed up and registered next session is going to be on implementing peer tutoring so national education policy talks about using peer tutoring as a method um to empower um our our students and to use the power of peer to peer learning in a more constructive manner so how can schools implement peer tutoring we are going to be looking at that peer to peer uh, so do register for that and last but not the least to all my panelists thank you so much tahe dil se aapka bahut bahut shukriya because i know all of you understand hindi uh for being here and supporting us uh it was a wonderful discussion the recording of the discussion would be available on our website as well as our youtube channel so without wasting too much time hasta la vista for another wonderful friday at 5 thank you so much